It's like the only humans who aren't irredeemable douchebags are the ones who basically just open their arms and completely embrace the Navi culture. And the whole Navi as a whole, they're just so ridiculously perfect, it's insane. I mean, let's just ask a, a question. Where the hell are the fat Navi? Where the hell are the disabled Navi? Where the hell are the imperfect Navi? The ones who aren't seven feet tall and just perfect athletic warriors? Because those do exist. Do whenever you have a natural breathing race, occasionally you do get stuff like this. <laughs> yeah, it's just a, it's just kind of a trend we've noticed. I think the line that really set it off for me is that, for those who haven't seen it, there's one point where um, the whole plot of Avatar is basically a human in this Avatar body of a Navi interacting with a Navi culture and learning about them. The original premise is that he's going there to negotiate, although as one Flash video points out, he never actually does any negotiating as such, but anyway. And it comes to this bit where the military is about to shut them down, and he says, you can't shut us down, now we're making such good progress. And to back up their point, the military plays this clip from a video diary by the main character. I don't know whether he was drunk at the time or whether he's saying it seriously, but either way, in this video camera, he basically says, we have nothing to offer the Navi. What, Diet Pepsi and jeans? <laughs> and the reason that line pisses me off is because... Okay, to refer you again, Mr. James Cameron. Yes, you can say that right now, there is a lot of commercialization and product placement, and corporate business is advertising us to every waking moment. There's one small problem, though. That does not define humanity as a whole, and it is certainly not the only thing we've accomplished in the past 2,000 years or so we've been on this freaking planet, okay? I would continue that rant, but really all I can say is I agree. I, I mean, I would be the first person to point out any and all flaws of humanity and whenever humanity makes a gargantuan mistake because I am a cynical bastard, but even by my standards, this is retarded. Yeah, it's just, I swear, I could rant on for hours, so unless the fans suddenly decide they want to hear every single problem I have with Avatar, we'd better end it here, so... Yeah, you and me. Unless the fans really want this to turn into nothing but a gigantic rant, which I imagine some of them do, because let's face it, sometimes anguish is amusing. <laughs> Indeed. You, Proton John, but in this case... <laughs> but in this case, I think we'd better end it for the sake of our own mental sanity. Yeah, and one last point I want to bring up just to kind of give this whole unified thing and just to kind of show how misguided some of Cameron's thinking is. There was another separate interview where one of the actresses who played a character that died in the last act of Avatar basically sort of said, oh, I'm, I'm going to have lots of fun making Avatar 2. And then when people ask, wait, didn't your character die? How could she come back? One of the things he said and one of the things that James Cameron himself has echoed in another review, is that, oh, no one really dies in science fiction. I could say so much about that line, but let me just yeah. say this. Game of Thrones would beg to differ. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can add several more to that list. I mean, God, how many people have died in science fiction? There was Tasha Yar from Star Trek. Uh, one of the uh, female cast members died in Deep Space Nine. I think, uh, in fact, uh, James Sisko's wife died in Deep Space Nine. That formed the premise of the entire series. Uh, that's... that's not even moving past Star Trek. I mean, there was Obi-Wan, there was Darth Vader, there was the Emperor, there was... Let's see. There was there Yoda. Was Darth... Yep, and there was Darth Maul. <laughs> the, the Apprentice. Time and time and time and time and time again. Oh god, yes, uh, there was... <laughs> if you're gonna include video games, there was also Adam, and there was also Saren. It just shows you how much he knows about the genre that you can literally come up with a list of all the people who died in science fiction. Yeah, and I would like to add on to that. This isn't even getting into the characters who have died in his own movies. Oh god, yes. <laughs> Which, might I add, aside from Titanic, are nothing but science fiction. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> like, it just cut out an entire swath out of the group. Pretty much everyone in the Terminator series. James Cameron, a man who wrote a series of movies which basically amount to kill them all, <laughs> saying that no one dies in science fiction whenever he wrote it that way. 
<laughs> yeah, I... Yeah, that just sums up everything, I think, so... Oh, and if no one dies in fiction, why have we heard nothing about the transparently evil Colonel in Avatar 1? Definitely. In fact, he was one of the few characters I'd like to see back. The paraphrase of the standard critic just to see what made him so damn evil in the first place. Yeah, because to paraphrase a bleach rat we went on, I would just like to see a flashback of his past to see how many of his dogs had to be killed before he became that much of a dick. <laughs> oh, dear. So, yeah, moving on to the final news story, which is about Pokemon Black and White 2. I swear, for the love of God, this is the last time. Uh, well, at least it's something we remotely enjoy talking about. Yeah, there was one more series of scans, some of which came out early due to a leaked video on YouTube, and I've got to say, a lot of these scans provide some interesting information, and again, like I said, this will be the last time we talk about it because I'm going to avoid all scans from now on so that I don't get spoiled any further. But there is one thing that has been confirmed. Not only is Professor Ju I'm trying to remember how you pronounce her name, Jupiter, Juniper, thank you. <laughs> Not only does she return, but also Bianca and Cherry get returned as well. Yes. <laughs> Even though I can basically sum up Cherry's appearance as Uriu Ishida, age 13. Yeah, but... Oh, wow, you know, now that I think about it, yeah, he does look a lot like him, but... <laughs> it's good to see those two characters returning. We've received no news about the uh, main protagonist of Black and White, but I can definitely tell you is that Bianca starts off as she is now officially Professor Juniper's assistant, and in fact she's the one that hands you the tray with all the starting Pokémon on it. <clears throat> well, nice to see some characters developing already. <laughs> yep, and Terry, this may be a spoiler warning for some people, so put up your hands on the ears and go la 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 for a few seconds. Terry is a gym leader. Oh my, yes. Fun <laughs> fact, I liked him the better of the two. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. Bianca's character development was, well, kind of iffy. I mean, it, her development was more, I can't really catch up to you two. Which, I don't know why, I was never really 100% happy with the way it ended, if that makes sense. Yeah. It kind of paled in comparison to the rest of the character development. Pretty much, yeah. But yeah, Terry is now a gym leader, which I've got to say fits him, although it does raise a question. I haven't seen that much but I've into the scan, so I don't know if Terry is sticking to his balanced squad or whether he's decided to go with one type of Pokemon. I will say this, if he's still sticking to the balanced squad, that would make a very interesting, unique take on a gym leader. That is true. Because we've I mean, only ever had champions that had balanced teams. Well, there was one exception, and that was Blue when he made his appearance in Pokemon on Gold and Silver. But that said, that was kind of a special case, and since Kanto was like an extra post-game world anyways, it's possible that actually Terry could fill the same role where he's like the eighth badge and he does have a balanced team, but only time will tell. <laughs> yeah, that would be some uh, pretty prodigal character development since his whole character arc seemed to revolve around him finding his place as a trainer and becoming stronger. If he was the final gym leader, becoming the most powerful gym leader in the region, that would make, that would make for a pretty prodigal ending to his character arc. And I think my phone just went off. <laughs> yeah, I just heard that. Yeah. I heard that all the way across the Atlantic. Anyway, whilst I'm happy to see the return of those two characters, it has brought up two interesting questions. The first, now that we've confirmed that it's set in the future after Black and White, which I guess should be obvious, does that mean Bianca and Terrian are the only returning characters? Do we get to see, like, older versions of some of the gym leaders, for example? Yeah. That is actually an interesting point, and I'm kind of interested to see how their designs would change over time. You actually kind of think of it, in Pokemon Gold and Silver, which weren't around the same premise in that it was a few years after Red and Blue, there were several characters who got promotions, like Bruno became like the third member of the Elite Four instead of the second, and Koga ended up being promoted from Gym Leader to Elite Four. So it would be interesting to see if something like that happens in Black and White, whether one of the Gym Leaders gets promoted. Yeah. And admittedly, I would find it extremely amusing if Clay was one of the promoted ones, because he was the lazy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> that actually would finish style oh, perfectly, not have to fight anyone until something come out of there. Yeah, and actually it would fit, because in the end, 
anyone who, who likes black and white will know this. He was the one who actually led the gym leaders to charge on Inn's castle. Oh yeah, that's a good point, he did! So, actually, overall, I can see that happening. Yeah, that would definitely be cool. And also, the second thing, which I don't think anyone's confirmed yet, which is just a question that's been brought up after looking at the screenshot, what are the starter Pokémon going to be for Black and White 2? Because there are no new Pokémon, so... Yeah. That is a good point. I would presume that they would be the old three. True, it doesn't offer that much variety if they do. I mean, I mean, it, I might mix it up a bit, because for me it's either Survivor or Tempic, although I probably would go with Tempic most of the time. So. Yeah, those two are kind of the badasses. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fan of Oshawott as some other people's. So. Revolver Oshawott. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was just silly. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will admit its final form looks pretty cool, although maybe that's just because it has that kind of weird samurai armor on its legs, I don't know where that came from. Yeah, I will admit that, Samurai is kind of appealing. Not quite as appealing <laughs> as the other two. That is true. I usually just go with Tepi because often I need a fire type and I find Tepi so adorable, although N4 I'm not that big a fan of, I still prefer Blazing Kid on Charizard. Well, to be honest, it's hard to beat Charizard, and Blaziken was just awesome anyway. Yeah, that's true, although it probably won't happen, but it would be interesting if one of the old sets of starters got unused. Like, they probably won't use the gold and silver starters since they're already in hard gold, but it would be interesting to see, like, either the ruby and sapphire or red and blue starters being used at the beginning. Oh, yeah. I'd find this came on principle, even if I knew nothing about the black and white saga, just for the possibility of using a Blaziken to tear a path of badass through Unova. Yeah, it would definitely be cool to play those guys again, and it, it would make sense since they're in reintroducing the Pokémon from the past generations. Again, to confirm what we were suggesting before, Eevee is now a wild Pokémon in this, which, yeah, I think that's the first time it's ever happened. And, uh, let me extrapolate on that by saying, thank God. <laughs> I don't want to have to wait till the end of the game to get one. That's true. I can't remember if we had to wait till the end of the game last time, but even so, if you just wanted to experiment with all the different types, it's been possible without breathing, and that you always takes forever. Yeah. And it's also a bit of an issue whenever you have no internet connection on your DS. Do, I... do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trust me, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, that's pretty much all we can say about Black and White 2. The news is getting more and more interesting. Unfortunately, I will now be cutting myself off from all news so that I'm not spoiled in advance. And if anyone tries to post me said spoilers for a joke, well, let's just say the man with the creepy voice will carry out his threats. Oh uh, yeah, my good old friend that nearly visited me because I spoiled you on the fact that there was in fact a second black member of Unova's Pokemon League. <laughs> yes, yes. You are wildly crazy later. Oh god. I'll get chills with that voice. <laughs> uh, wait until will you, uh, wait until I deepen it in post production. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, long story short, still looking forward to black and white. I'm officially going on spoiler hiatus, and yeah, it continues to look interesting. Yes, and I am still praising the Lord Almighty. It is not a 3DS exclusive because. Again, I'm not hating on the 3DS, I just don't want to buy one because they cost an arm and a leg. Yeah, well, at least you did it buy before the price drop. <laughs> yeah, although I'll still have to buy one exclusively for Fire Emblem 13 because that's just obligatory. Pretty much. And, yeah, I apologize for this being short, so we'll find some way to work around it, but that's the end of Monkey Broadcast for this month, so... As usual, if you have any opinions of what we discussed you'd like to share, feel free to post them in the comment section. That's what it's there for. But in the meantime, that's the end of this broadcast, so until next time, that was me, the Jerry Monkey. And me, Spin the Crusader. Remember everyone, gotta catch them all. That was Monkey Broadcast. A monthly review discussion show hosted by the Dirty Monkey and Spend the Crusader. If you feel that you've been the subject of slander or that your copyright has been misused, please PM me and I'll try and get round to fixing it as soon as possible. We also welcome any comments, be it feedback or your own viewpoints on any of the things we've discussed. 
Until next month, have fun, kids.